Hey, hey, Jelly Toast. Here. Um, not streaming this, but this is all being recorded offline because I wanted to be able to um, pause the video recording whenever I wanted because I have um, I have a bunch of rapport conversations. So um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish up Oops. this battle, this battle, and this one because this has to do with um getting party members. I'll get more party members, I'll raise rapport with them, and then I'm just gonna go through everyone's um rapport covers. Uh yeah. Go. Oh. Close stage sword fighter and they show me that, and I still don't know who's They're strong against shields. Winged is good against cavalry. Ugh, I'm sick of sitting on my hands all day. Why does war have to be so boring? Those morons will pay for stationing me in the middle of absolute nowhere. Where is your accent? Lower your voice, Lady Melisandre. There's no telling whose ears lie behind what corners. Anyone worth half a damn wouldn't bother listening to my drivel. I swear fealty to Galerius, and this is my prize? Enough. This querulous nonsense is unbecoming of the storied House Maze sole survivor. Your relation to the family line- Can we please not go into this now? I'd rather not feel belittled by my glorious ancestors Another today. Brat. Yay. Urgent news, milady! Where are all the girls Speak. the spoiled brats? Well, I guess rebel, Aush sir. is a spoiled boy brat, camp. but... Marching hey. from Liz Bush, hmm? Bush? This all comes far sooner than I'd expected. And if the reports are to be believed, it seems His Highness Elaine leads the charge. That's the best news I've heard in months. This Elaine fellow might as well be hand delivering our long lost glory himself. That's what ah, every bad guy says. Oh, it's the, I just it's the he's liberation. Easy on the eyes I'll too. defeat them and I'll get glory. It's like, no. And there's the other side of her. Can't you tell a joke when you hear one? He could be the most handsome man in the world, and I'd still fight just the same. Oh no, you and Nina could stay in a now, party together. Prepare for the assault. And Annoy the heck out of each other. Contingent, you know where. Yes, milady. Sound the alarm whistle. I want all lieutenants ready for battle at once. How old was that prince meant to be again? It would be an awful shame if he breathed his last before I got a good look at him. Maybe I'll just take a quick pre-battle peek. And why shouldn't I? There's not a man in the world who could hope to equal me. Oh my god. Her and Nina will get stunted off in the middle of nowhere. Is anyone in there? I'm Melisandre's- oh. Melisandre was also the name of the bad guy in Game of Thrones. You know I'm in general and your opponent in the battle ahead. I to greet your leader, Elaine, before we forced to face each other in combat. Um... <laughs> I wanna ignore her. Better to ignore her than to risk a knife at my throat. Now then, I must make ready for battle. And silence is your answer? Fine, we'll let our blades do the talking. Uh -huh. Ugh, so much for convincing him to yield. We barely have any supplies left and no hope of reinforcements either. All we can do now is strike at them with everything we've got. Surely you don't intend to take battle yourself, Lady Melisandre. And why wouldn't I? Because, my lady, you are House Maye's sole remaining heir. I beg you, issue your commands from the safety of our encampment. Fine, just see that our men follow the plan. I didn't make a mistake with um to the skies not beating her the day will be ours uh, who needs leveling it's 11 11 12 11 11 11 12 10 13 12 10. Um. oh man but I really like you guys they're fast you know what, you guys are too strong, so let's do Petra. Stay right here. My time to shine. We march. 
Ooh. Stay out it's of me. the way of the. Nowhere is too far. Let's go. I stand ready. Why aren't I going? Here we go. Haha. Come then. You're in reach. Only stays shoulder to shoulder with his own charges. Hmm? He's even braver than I gave him credit for. Holy Knight Joseph appears to ride amongst them as well. I can only assume he's responsible for teaching the boy the ways of war. A charming prince, gifted with not just looks but talent and spades. I can't say I'm not interested. My lady, oh no, is she a Yandere? I hate Yandere. The time is at hand. Onward. I'll be taking that. I'm here. You face me. Quite the sight watching him march into battle like any other soldier. Indeed it is, my lady. The boy is more than just a skilled swordman, he's a fine leader as well. Even so, he's a fool for de defying Zenoira, though that might be exactly what I like about him. A fine bout. Okay, why do I feel like someone's gonna like appear from out of no Shiny over there? Oh, I feel like over here they're gonna come out. So how do I go about this? Would like to get rid of this. Maybe I should deploy. What's it? In service of the royal, awaiting your command. Attack the. By your word. That thing. At your service. Um. Uh. This way. Sir. We march. To me. I've arrived. I'm in their firing range. Lowers mobility. Ah! I'll not fail you. Um, this way. As you wish. You you stay right there, yeah. I am uh, <clears throat> awaiting your command. Very well. Oh. Come then. I'm gonna be super over leveled. Well fought. Come. I could take over the bolster, right? For the liberation, I'll not fail you. By your word, as expected. Um, who do I want to fire at? Oh, uh, watch. The time is at hand. Um, uh, I don't the care if my mobility is standing by. There. Your villainy ends here. I blossom ever brighter. I love Miriam. She's so strong. Nowhere is too far. Understood. Surround me. Ugh. Face me and be cut down. I need Awaiting you to your command. Disembark. Um. <clears throat> you guys me. take care of them. I'll not you fail go you. after the shine. As you wish. No mercy. Oh yeah, I changed the difficulty to um easy mode. It Story seems mode. You've so me. battles will go by a lot. I fast. stand ready, sir. You Hirsch. face me. Victory grows ever closer. The time is at hand. Just in case I'll uh onward. In the name of the liberation. We shall make proper use of this. I have arrived. I would like to level you up, but I'll just oh. guess I'm up. Not Maybe a problem. Can. Um I feel like Joseph's in hand. Now what? Good. <clears throat> I can't move, huh? Well, I gotta stay there. Awaiting your command. Get By your word. Let's let you heal up a little bit more. It's time. Deploy our men stationed at the ruins. I knew it. More of them. Everyone, brace yourselves against their attack. Onward, men. Take their command post and put an end to this pointless struggle.
At your service. Boy. I feel like you guys would be good against it's my them. duty as a priest. How can I help? You can go to the right. garrison. We march. For them. <laughs> hmm. Light tail feather. A fine box. It's ours now. Well thought. I'm ready for anything. Magical assist is nothing. Don't stop now. Nowhere is too far. Let's move faster. Whoops, wait time. No, didn't mean to do that. I can oh do well. this. I stand ready. Oh, that's what I meant to do. Victory await. Nowhere is too far. You can at once. Do. You can have someone to void to By garrison. the grace of the holy unicorn. Go. Uh, a fine bout. Face me and be cut down. Dead and buried. Dead and buried. I'll not fail you as you awaiting Oops. your command. Joseph could join the battle too. You're nothing. Oops, I meant to swap to Joseph's unit so that they can get more experience. Victory is ours. Gaze upon the face. They won't win. Uh, cut down. You gotta stick with me. Higher still. I shall hold Joseph nothing can kill back. them. For the liberation. Are they still alive down here? Nope. That's good that I took a list. Okay. What would you ask? By your word. At your service. Understood. Oh. You fought well to reach my camp, Elaine. Now lay down your arms and we may just show you mercy. I'll do no such thing. But I would ask the same of you, Melisandre. Relinquish your post or suffer the consequences. As if you're in any position to make demands. Fine then, let's see if your bite or your of your blade can match that of your word. Gaze upon the face of your demise. I'll just fast forward this. This liberation of yours is even tougher than they say. But don't expect I'll give in without a fight. You can fight? <laughs> your bigger face! Crush him good! Hold fast! Oh no, I didn't mean to skip. I wanted to see her cut down. <gasps> Fran got Fran's dead! Greater strength to keep Sharon safe. Keep getting sharper. Oh yeah, I changed um Rolf's looks and his me. level up um priorities. What shall be done with her, my prince? I know how this goes. I'm prepared for any fate you see fit. Recruit her. Come, Melisandre. You belong with me. Was that a proposal? No. I... Perhaps I misspoke. I mean that you belong with us. The Liberation, that is. We have great need of fighters of your distinction. Oh, well, I suppose it's still a oh, tempting no. offer. Oh no, is her retainer dude going to... You mean to accept, milady, but their hopes of success are nigh non-existent. Think for a minute, Colin. What did our loyalty to Galerius get us besides tedium and depression? And now that we failed him, he's bound to complete the trifecta with our heads on the chopping block. A fair point. We'd more than likely face the same fate were we to decline the Liberation's offer besides. In truth, no odds are too small when they're the sole chance to preserve your noble lineage. Speaking of that lineage, just imagine... You're never married. Cornea's illustrious house Maye, allied with the rebels who seek to reclaim her status. Why, we'd be a prized feather in their cap. You're Delulu. Isn't that right, Elaine? I wouldn't dare disagree. 
Our union would be a significant one indeed. Then it's settled. I should say, I've taken quite a liking to you. Nope. Know that that's why I'm joining. Above anything else. Thank you, Melisandre. That's not all I want, though. Once you claim the throne, I'll be expecting a place at your side for real. Nope. Sorry? Oh, don't worry. Miriam's number one on my list. Queen. Really, uh, Miriam Just and then Fran. One of the few dozen consorts every king calls upon. Fascinating. Yes. Let's discuss it another time, shall we? <laughs> Let's never discuss it again. Well, another grill. Black Iron Sword, ooh. Glad to be coming with you, Elaine. Sword Fighter. These would work good against the. Perhaps I should come with you as well to make sure Melisandre doesn't cause you too much trouble, of course. Ooh! Ooh, Fort of Breath of Love. Okay, so if I liberate this town, I should be able to dig up these resources for free. So I need to do their little side quest thingy. Was there a resource? No. So I have to do that exclamation point right. right. Hey, right? Oh, where'd you come from? Die. Oh, um... What are these new swords? Black iron sword, critical rate plus five. No, I like my king's mix. That's pretty good. Oh, there's a bronze sword. I'll leave it alone. Let's do it. Die. Laika! Thank the father you're all right. I'm sorry to worry you, Hans. Don't be. This wasn't your fault. And you, Sir Alec, words will forever fail to capture my gratitude for what you've done this day. We'll never forget this, brave hero. Please, your continued safety is thanks enough. Our role in this is concluded, my lady. I trust you'll see them to sound shelter. Whatever Kerr has claimed you're not but a reclusive coward, they're dead wrong. I suppose that's what I get for believing rumors. Forgive me, Prince Elaine. Oh, you realized I was a prince. You must have me confused. I'm- Champion of the rebel army and lost son of Queen Elenia. I'm well aware. Enlighten me, Monica. If you knew Elaine was the prince, why did you leave us to dispatch those robes by ourselves? You speak as though you have no blame in the matter. Or do you greet all your acquaintances with such shameless detachment? You know her, Clive? Ooh. In a manner of speaking, yes. I like Monica. The woman before you is Lady Monica. Beloved granddaughter to Cornea's own Marquis Nordheim. And, though the affair is years since buried, by a compact reached between the Marquis Interesting and my Interesting that they chose the, the Count, French pronunciation of Marquis instead of Marquis, well. which is the English way. <gasps> she was my fiancé! <gasps> okay, I know who Clive has to marry. Ex-fiancé would be more accurate, your highness. Oh, why are they exes? As for you, Clive. Okay, so I've Berenice no wasn't aware Clive's of the shadow your liberation antics cast over my family. Zenoira confiscated our territory, stripped us of our title, and what scant land we were seen fit to retain stood on the farthest fringes of the entire kingdom. Monica, I... I'm sorry. I never meant for any of this. And I never asked for your apology. It's as you say long buried neath the sands of time. In any case, our land now rests firmly in Zenoira's steeled fist, and I haven't the authority to let the Liberation cross it. But... Oh, don't look at me like that. We all know the tale. Yesterday's fiancé becomes today's foe. A story as tragic as it is trite. 
But I've made my Man, peace Clyde, with what must have, be done. You have like fights then with all the it. ladies. You fight this the horse. Way. Now show me how you ride. Though a suggestion, if I may. Don't stay your hand. One false step, and you'll find yourself the freshest corpse in the body pit. Just like those rogues before you. So you're joining? I think you're willing to reconsider your challenge. Unwilling to. You truly believe the decision to fight you is mine to make. I didn't choose this battle, I inherited it. And all I can do now is see it through to the end. Fighting? Fighting. Level 12, Radiant Knight. Okay, so no magic. The Elaine will be... What word of the rebels? Still cornered in San Larish, ma'am. But they'll be prepared to march at any moment, by my estimate. Then we resolve to face them head on. Give word of such to any man or woman fit for battle. Whoever brings me the heads of these insurgents can name their reward. Yes, ma'am. Stare any harder and you'll pierce clean through me. Do you object, Matthias? Indeed, I do. Hmm. Clive and this liberation of his mean to threaten us into submission and resist Zenoira rule besides. My judgment is sound. I'm certain of it. We don't want- I've served beneath okay. you a great many years, my leash. A decade past, you would have clutched the mantle of freedom even tighter than Sir Clive does now. And I suspect that fire in your belly burns yet brighter than you'd have me believe. We both know the inferno such flame can bring. The other noble houses had long held us in kind esteem. Yet when Grandfather refused to bend the knee to Galerius, they forsook us like we were common swine. They're cowards. In the end, his banishment and the confiscation of our lands were the price we paid for survival. If one as proud and dignified as he could be dragged to such depths, I dare not imagine myself immune. My leash. The territory stripped from us is now lorded over by aristocrats loyal to the might of Zenoira. But they spurn proper leadership. And grow fat off the very lifeblood of our citizens. Do you wish it, she seems to be conflicting? It's like, oh I won't man, condemn still I don't want to let slaughter. you pass, but because, like, uh, wait, uh, like, you're not allowed Even to pass, and you, you ruined our myself. family with your talks of liberation. But Galerius sucks, and like, all these crappy people took our lands, and like, so. What do you want to do? And with the liberation, do you want to punish Galerius and the other nobles who spurned your family? Like, what do you want? Monica waits us at the point ahead, your highness, and while I wouldn't dare ask that you stay your hand, I do have a request. And I speak with her again once the battle is won. The moment shall be yours, Clive. Ooh. This is a pretty... aid. So if I send Griffin over this way, and Horseman over this way, I think she's the only Radiant Knight. Wait, is she even on a horse? Yeah, she's a Radiant Knight. Okay. Wives team will break for that. Okay. To the skies. Um. Oh, but it's Sharon's you for healing. You guys go. It's my duty as a priestess. And we'll just have four backup guys here. The day will be ours. I'll do what I can. I can handle bridge. it. Nowhere is too far. Power. You thought you could get past me. This. Oh, it's only one dude. Okay. That wasn't so bad. I'm here. 
get one more valor and I could deploy another unit. Face me and be cut down. Victory is ours. I stand ready. Take Understood. This, uh... Look what I found. Nowhere is too far. Only 17 damage? At Again, once. it's only one person. You're the trick? Nothing. Or are they extremely understaffed? Dead and buried. At your service, sir. Oops. Nowhere is too far. Understood. Let me take this one. Oh yeah, I do have Nina in an active party right now. Hey, uh, is it just me, or does something feel weird here? It's like they're not even trying to stop us. I doubt they are. Monica seems to be focused more on a duel than any kind of concerted defense. So I'll just have to give it to her then. Just like I thought. How can I help? Again, it's only one right. dude. I'll take it off your hands. You've done well to resist Lady Monica as long as you have. If she's far tougher than you likely expect, keep your guard raised high, or she will crush you like you were nothing. Who's that random Griffin Knight talking to? I'm ready for anything. Experience. That wasn't so okay. bad. I'm far from helpless. I can handle it. I've taken it. Cool. Now. And so I fall to rebels who ravage our home. Forgive me, Lady. Uh, How can I help? Am I doing the bad thing by? That the leader why am I doing do a bad thing by killing all these people I ride for cornea what shall I do over sub town yeah at your service wait one more Joseph unit by the grace of the holy Oops. unicorn I'm prepared for anything Person. Departing. Also, this is story mode, so I guess um it's not too hard to fight. Good, the time has come. All units march upon the enemy. Ah prize. Not to alarm anyone here, but I think we're surrounded. The situation is dire, your highness, but we must remain calm in its wake. In any case, facing such numbers head-on will only result in utter failure. I suggest we employ the weapons scattered about the region in our counteroffensive. Oh, and don't forget about guarding our escape room. Make sure we've summoned back at the command post, yeah? Okay, then. I can win this. Oh yes, because I got um. Oh no, Hodrick! Everything in service. I've much room to improve. Not great to use him I'm here because. Regeneration. I don't really like Scarlet's thing. Let's just use item though. Um. Yeah, you can stay there. Oh, it would be nice to have Kitra there. Or I could have. Garen. Or oh, no wait, uh oh, those. No. I think maybe they have a valor skill where I can Let me just take this one. barricade. Arr! Don't stop now. You're only hurting me this much because Wait, I have catapult. Um I'm gonna garrison ours. though. I may not believe this, but Lady Monica's a kind soul. I doubt she truly wants to fight deep down. Please take whatever supplies you need. I'll prove oh. my worth. Joseph can attack. In service of the royal awaiting your command. Going to as that. you wish. You what shall I do? That. It shall what be should done. I do now? Oh, it shouldn't be hurting anything. anything. Or are you gonna take out Hodrick? Yep, Hodrick died. To protect those who can't protect themselves. Shut up, Nina. I'll do what I can. Oops. How can I help? Much better. Now you guys can heal.
Your orders, sir. Have you hit the these stinger? I refuse to yield. Monica is pretty smart. Move forward in the light of the divine. Having everyone come out. Face me and be cut down. No All mercy. HP. Uh... We must claim victory. Fight me. I shall hold nothing back. Our success is inevitable. I thought I fired at the barricade. I hope you find peace. Have I not yet? You're nothing. Any valor skill? I stand ready. Uh, vitalize, restore two stamina. Okay, stays and call our. Use our ring. All three of you. Aha. Uh -huh. Never doubt a desert kid. Frenzied strike, cool. Gaze upon the face Rush. of your demise. A trivial undertaking. There we go. Come. I can't wait for my next fight. What would you ask? I want Very to well. Shit. We shall make proper use of this. I have I'll not fail you. By your word. We must claim victory. I'll pray for your soul. Let's see. Is there anyone else? I... You guys are just there. You're chilling there. Oh, all of them died. Oh, because of his um, arrow ring. Aw, oh, man. Okay. Well, I'll Guide slowly have me, you move to shy. Is that all? Gaze upon the face of your demise. For the liberation. I refuse to yield. And someone go after Clive, too. I want him back. to level up. I've not chosen my grave yet. Our success is inevitable. Getting stronger by the day. Wait, where's Clive? This could prove useful. He's in the oh shoot. I'm here. Oh, they are attacking me. Stand before me. I'm ever in your service. Oh, I want to. Yeah! Order's complete. I'm just leaving that fort alone. I shall never fail. A worthy foe. What shall I do? It shall be done. Hello. Stand before me. Did you need me? Let's see. Yeah, the ballista doesn't read there, so. I advance. Radiant what knights. What would you ask? I move. As you wish. The odds do not stand Ooh, wow. in my favor. Oh, uh, hey? Ah, uh, Griffin Knight. Fast. Oh, nope. you miss. I have you. Last! Whether by the ambush, have you? At least you're making a compelling fight. 
Just a bit, Monica. You've grown into quite the skilled commander since last we met. As expected. Please get rid of the Griffin Knight. I shall never yes. fail. Come that time we were honor, able no to flex. hold her off. Whatever. I'll prove my worth. What about life aid? Huh. What should I do now? Time is with us. Should we only keep our focus? They seek my head. This is damaged. What right. shall I do? Oh, I'm okay. Wrong. Guide me, oh father. Departing. Ooh, okay. He's fast. At your service. At once. I'm ever in your service. Let's use the valor skill. Nope. Stop it. What shall I do? Physical potency. Here. What do you mean no target mail? Now let's fight. Stand before me. In another time, another life, perhaps this could have all gone differently. Ah, Clive. A pity it is to see you here, yet pity shall not spare you my blade. Now, come. Your blood will wash clean the Nordheim name. Let us see if you can uphold that boast. It feels like, no matter who's right or wrong, she cares more about status than doing, like, you know, health. Oh. With my aid. Seems we've done it. Have we though? Awaiting your command Detective. by your word. Come. <coughs> Ever weaker. <coughs> Seems the rumors spoke true. Very well. I admit defeat. You're Gotta take care of the magic man. Stand true. You're mine. Forgive me. I fight in me yet. A toast to strength. A trivial undertaking. White Knight Shield. Well met, Prince. I surrender. My life is yours to claim, should you but promise to let my soldiers free. I'll promise nothing. We come for peace, not blood. Now, the rostrum is yours, Clive. Go on. What could you possibly have left to say to me? Only the truth, Monica. Marquis Nordheim is a key benefactor to the Liberation. He what? In our fledgling days, we had no backing to speak of, and not to fill our coffers but dust and cobwebs. Until, that is, your grandfather took it upon himself to fund our development. By his words, he'd much sooner see his wealth invested in Cornea's future than stripped barren by its captors. <sighs> you mean to say this struggle lacked purpose? To tell me now at its conclusion? I do not. What remains of your noble house could never risk having its fealty questioned by its Zenoiran masters. Hence, the Marquis sent us here. They will hear you fought valiantly, and were left with no choice but to capitulate. Wonderful. A drama to rival the scripts of the Masters, and I the only one to improvise her lines. Yeah, way to leave her in the dark, that's kind of scummy. entirely too believable, coming from that old fox. But should my grandfather wish it, I've no place to disagree. Grant me permission to join the cause, your highness. Any objections, Clive? Not a one. The Marquis knew all along how this would play out. Questionable though his methods may be, 
The man clearly bears a vast and profound love for his granddaughter. Right by our side. Then we mustn't do that love a disservice, not to mention our dire need of reinforcements. Come with us, Monica, and strike true your blade for the liberation. You shall know none truer. And mind you don't meet its edge yourself, my former betrothed. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you guys married. I'll be coming home for some time. Bias. Bias? Yeah, whatever. Before my grandfather, however you might. Keep our people safe. Be it done, my lady. Forgive me for saying so, but... Well, I merely hope you find it within yourself to reconcile with five. I suppose we'll see. Yeah! Where's the town? Life can't... Yes! Deliveries. Ah! Oh, unsullied timber. Horny and sardines. Where the... Okay. Hud Town, how dare you. Here to shop? Or maybe to nice. sell? Just say the uh -huh. word and it's yours. Do I need a revival? Good. Thank you very Oof. much. Phone is vibrating. Come back. Armor, what you got? You're, after. you're in the right Vitality. place. Vitality, quick barrier, defenders me. Activate before an ally. Food tacit war cry. That powerful call. Ooh, my accuracy's low. No, thank you. BC. Let's try to gather more. Hit you. Yes. Things longer. I think there was one more thing I had. Battle and then. To report. Let's see. I don't know how to reach that. The other side. Wait, I didn't free you either? What? Oh, yeah, because I just did it. Nice. Dice the is like and it's yours. the new form of okay. Thank you very much. Come. If it's steel you're after, you're in the right place. Be Got good accessories. To Allow me, my prince. Okay. Oh, I mean sardine. Not with that town. I guess now that I have someone in San La Riche. Be able to gather the materials. Right? Okay. Time to do all the support. This will be fun. <sighs> Alright, your harness. That ache is all. Worry not, Joseph. I intend to be off to bed. Wish that were true, yet the maps and tactical reports in your hand appear to be otherwise. What manner of leader would I be should I only rely on the knowledge of others? A sensible one, considering the alternative. Um, you clearly need your- But if I don't do this, who will? Listen to me. It is not as your advisor, but as the father giving care. I'm not bear to see you suffer like that. 
Watch the fits of pain cast across you. I'll not put you through it any longer. I only ask that you help me to. As you wish. Pray, come with me. I thought there was supposed to be... Uh... Things. There we are. Are you warm enough, your highness? I am. It feels as though I'm a child again. Under your attentive care as I was for so many years. Yet you've grown much and more in the day. Stand taller now, kinder, a true leader, beholden to none but your own command. Be assured that in that growth, and let your worries be washed away by the gentle tide of sleep. Thank you, Joseph. Even in slumber, I can still see echoes of the boy. How foolish I was to refer myself as his I am the blade of the royal family and nothing more. Oh yeah, time for honors farming. So the reason why I want to at least show um, the rapport conversations of everyone is because not every rank has rapport conversation. That's the math. If you look at rapport, like the ones with the hands, oh my gosh, Elaine has conversation with almost everyone. But like, see, I've reached rapport level 2 with Rolf. There was no conversation. With Alpin, there is none. There won't be one. Like everyone has. Almost everyone. Oh, no Cole. No Renault. Oh, Monica. But if you look at other characters, like, look at Hodrix. Not a lot. Conversations. I figure everyone will have one at least for their first one, and if the characters are really close, be friendly to each other, they'll have more. Uh, conversations. Mm. It hasn't said so much as a same. Sad state of affairs, my lady. He is a cruel man indeed to toy with your heart in such a He did show us great kindness overlooking our past dealings. Perhaps the queenship Lady Melisandre desires is not as distant as it appears to be. Though, should she marry into the royal family, none would remain to assume leadership of the noble housemaid, A. Mumbling about over there, Cole. Time we head off to bed. Have you ever considered the impending existential danger to your lineage? No, frankly, and now the moment to doesn't hurt. We've almost died once in this war, and there's no telling when it may happen again. As it stands, Elaine's mercy is the only reason we still live. But for now, I wish to fight at his side, even at the risk of my own I suppose you make a fair point. I only wish I had more time to tend to my appearance before we rode into each other. I can't bear the thought of Elaine seeing my hair a mess and my unblemished skin covered in disgusting sweat. Is that not precisely why I stand beside you? Merely say the word in the midst of combat, and I shall ensure you appear as fair as the light of dawn. Thus, Prince Elaine shall only ever gaze upon you at your absolute best. Oh, please, if you attempted such a thing on the battlefield, neither of us would live to tell, tell the tale. But enough of this frivolous talk. If I ever hope to court Elaine, I have no choice but to fight on, and that's precisely what I plan to do. Well, come, Cole, we'll need our energy for tomorrow. Of course, my lady, rest well. Also, because this game is so full of, like, gather things, quick battles, um... It's nice to, um, see their relationship. Yes, I see. How truly wonderful. I didn't question, Mary. Who exactly are you speaking? There doesn't seem to be anyone else here, but the spirits of the dead. Please, there's nothing as fanciful as that. I was merely conversing with my loyal steed. Please speak to the tongues of- Speak the tongues of beasts. Not directly, no. It's more of a vague understanding I've acquired from her various sounds and behaviors. And I'm certain she's to hear my voice. Do you notice a similar phenomenon exists with our Selby? If you- Oh, I missed it. No, I, whatever. Far beyond what's possible with water alone. On the other hand, speaking ill of them shall cause them to wilt and wallow in despair. Fascinating. I thought such effort effects only apply to women and children. I admit I haven't actually attempted it myself, but the same is sure to be true of my faithful steed. Hence, I always address her with all the warmth and kindness I can muster. She does seem to be rather enamored with her. Flattering a patch of ruins would produce similar results. Perhaps you could slow their deterioration, or even unearth an ancient artifact with little to be. Yes, I'll have to test this theory at my suit. I like Selfie. I know other games have like, oh ho, here's a weird kooky mages who are so obsessed with research and magic. But she seems, like, very lovable about it. I don't know. It doesn't seem as creepy weird. Where do you think you're going, Lex? It's already past midnight. 
Oh, uh, I was just gonna grab a little water. All this wandering makes a guy thirsty, you know? I know you're lying. Alright, fine. I was planning on sneaking myself an early breakfast too. With blade in hand, I think not. How long have you been stealing off to train like this? Red handed. I applaud your dedication, I truly do. But wearing yourself too thin now will be at a great cost during actual battle. Oh, don't worry about that. I've been doing this for weeks. No problems yet. Very well. But we shall speak of this again, and if I if I ever catch your eyelids growing heavy, I doubt you wish to impede the princess march due to mere lack of sleep. Because you're only saying this stuff because of You shouldn't malign him so, Lex. It only keeps you out of sight because he trusts you. Huh. I think the big guy was actually trying to help me. Maybe I should get some sleep after all. Oh, I didn't want to... Chloe and Clark. I must say, it always pains me to see you burdened by dinner preparation. You may not have much skill in the art of cookery, yet I would love to aid you with preparing ingredients of that. What? That would be great. Though I have to wonder, how often have you actually bought food for yourself? It's never embarrassing as it is to sit with it. Such matters would always be left to lower ranking members of my order. Tell me, do you fear I would impede your work rather than expedite it? Oh, not at all. Now come, let's work on your shopping list. Give the weight, my lady. I've purchased everything you crusted. Um, Clive, what's in the giant saddlebag? Why, the seasonings you asked for, of course. I performed my own calculations based on the recipe you provided, and I believe this should be a sufficient amount. Sufficient for the next ten years, maybe. Not too much, you mean? Ah, tis a failure which brings shame to the very notion of knighthood. Please, it's nothing that dramatic. I can tell you were just eager to help. Here, why don't we get the next set of ingredients together? Thank you for your kindness, Chloe, and I promise I'll not fail you again. Aw, oh, they're trying to butter him up to Chloe. But I'm gonna make him marry Monica, if characters can get together. Kane and Melisandre. Ugh. Well, look who it is. Such striking blue hair, such vibrant skin, impressive as ever, even. Like almost yesterday, we were at war with each other over this land. It didn't last especially long, not with the way he charged towards me, absent even a hint of fear in his eye. Is that you, Melisandre? Oh, Elaine, I happen to be passing through the area. I wasn't watching you if that's what you were wondering. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't call out to me were that the case. Ah, oh, what a luxurious mane. How enchanting his gaze. But you stand so close, Melisandre, you're beginning to terrify me. Oh, I'm sorry, I should know better than to air. By the by, how'd you feel about a little spark match? Now, I don't see why not. Glad to hear it, and this way I can look at you all I want. Now let's begin. And he will wipe the floor with you. Seem rather motivated by this, Melisandre, but know that I'll not hold myself back either. Nor would I want you to. For all, none can pique my excitement quite like you can. <sighs> I'm glad that one was short. Relatively short. Oh, wait, did I? I didn't fight you. Sword fighters. Witch. Or I'm just so overpowered, I will just defeat you. I need to write out who's strong against me. Oh, yeah, Lex. Can I ask you something, Lex? Why do you only sneak food out when I'm on cooking? Is it obvious? It's because you're the best chef we got. We never have enough for seconds, so this is my one shot at getting a few extra bites in. Maybe we would have enough if someone wasn't feeling rations before we even sat at the table. Oh, I, uh, never thought about it like that. Still, I can't blame you for being. You work harder than just about anyone in the air. Well, I'm glad you think I'm a good cook. Hold on, is that blush? I really do mean it, though. I don't know what we'd do without you. You didn't let me finish. What I was going to say is, all the flattery in the world doesn't excuse theft. Listen, I'm sorry, alright? How about this? I'll set the table before dinner from now, and I'll help you clean up after two. And in return, you look the other way while I sneak a couple early bites. Fine, but the second you forget to help, the deal's over. Works for me. Oh, good. That's far more than a couple bites. Oh, sorry. Look. Master. What's this question mark? Oh, yeah, the room. 
do that yet. Um, well, Elaine and Hodrick. Fine evening, your highness. It is indeed the kind of peaceful atmosphere which calls to mind memories of my childhood. Do you remember the day you lifted me upon your feet above the castle? I'm not soon forget it. I can almost picture it now, gazing out at the endless lights which lay tranquil. As can I. Of course, I was still but a young man at the time, and quite a scolding from Sir Joseph for exposing you to such danger. Yet dangerous as it was, I could think of few moments. I often prayed that I would one day stand as tall as you, and I would bear the strength to support another. It is a prayer I continue to offer the heavens. I've done nothing to deserve such kind words, your height. I feel the same. The moments we spend together are truly. Certain Queen Elenia was a fine man you. You're right. Bell and Berenice. You don't. I need to figure out how to. Hold a moment. Is that you, Berenice? Ah, it is. We've not seen each other since you left the Order. Got booted from it, you- Guess this means you cry for deliberation now? It does. The time felt right, now that my province is rid of its cruel- If I may, though, you carry quite the blade. I take it you still bear little interest in cavalry. I'd rather stick to what I do best, yep. Me and horses don't ex really see eye to eye. Haha, I remember. The day of our training, you spent more time on the ground than in a saddle. Amusing, yes. Still, none of us could ever match your skill with the blade. The thing is, there's more to being a knight than clomping around a um, bee. Besides, I'm just a regular old mercenary. For us, skill's the only thing that matters. That's fair, yes. I'm sorry for even mentioning that. Seeing you just stirred up some old men. Don't worry about it. I'll say, though, it feels good being back on the same You're on the battlefield, Del. I can't wait. Call him a deal. When he first appeared, I wasn't wearing headphones, so I couldn't hear how they pronounced it. Berenice and Clyde. I won't forget this. Yeah, just keep walking if you know what's good for you. Berenice, what's going on here? Well, that just a little scuffle is all. Um, thank you, ma'am. Ah, I believe I understand now. You stepped in to assist that girl. Yet judging by appearances, I can only assume you did so through force, not work. Noble deed marred by the most ignoble methodology. Yeah, it's not the best look. But you and I both know I've never been too big on that. Be that as it may, there are more means to solve an issue than with the fists. By the way, a little chat wouldn't have helped much. Black eyes and bruises are the only language a guy like that talks. Perhaps so, yes. Well, it's a point well taken. Keep it in mind next time, yeah? Can't promise it'll turn any different, though. Whatever shall I do with you, Berenice? Yeah, they don't seem like romantic couple type. Just like bantering friend type. What can I possibly do with all this? I couldn't ask Kitra again, not after last time. Something the matter, friend? What's that bag you have there? Is this how I learned you're abandoning our order? No, I would never. From my parents, actually. An assortment of all my favorite pickled vegetables. Thankful for the gift, of course, but I'll never be able to eat it all on my own. They also sent me an array of formal wear, which is about as much use in battle as a hibernating griffin. And did we do have the occasional feast every now and then? Knowing the company we keep, wearing anything too fancy would make me stick out. Might you be able to send it all back? I thought about it, but I've just been passing off things off to Kitra's family instead. After all, I'd rather not hurt my parents' feelings if I could avoid it. It does sound quite the puzzle, though I admit I'm somewhat jealous to hear of it. Only misses I have ever received from my father demand did I honor our family name on the field of battle and I suppose I should be pleased to hear anything at all from him. Man is taciturn. Even so, I'm sure he worries about you in his own unique way. I bet no feat of bravery could ever make him happier than you get home. Pray you're correct. There are the pickled vegetables with the rest of the army. Kitra and Fran. We'll get you for this girl, just you wait. Kitra, what's going on here? 
going on as those mercs were making fun of me, so I taught them a little manners. Is that really all it took? You can't resort to violence over every bad word said about you. Think how you'll make us look, or yourself for that matter. You're the daughter of a lord, remember? You at least should start speaking like one of them. Sorry, not happening. The only lord our land's got now is a noble. My mom and dad are gone. I'm not a noble friend, and neither are you. Not anymore. He will be. Once his highness takes the throne, everything will go back to the way it used to be. That's what they say, yeah. But me, I'm not holding my breath. Do you not believe in him, Kidra? It doesn't matter what I believe. Besides, you're five times the proper lady I'll ever be. That's how it is, and that's how it's always gonna be. You can't mean that. I don't, really. And I know the prince isn't a bad guy. So, sorry. I'll watch what I say from now on. I promise. Anyway, I should get going. Places to be, you know? Rift has a promise you really keep. What are these stone circles? I guess I need to wait for a character. Able to use um... Oh, I didn't fight you. Oh, shoot. Die. And birdies. Ah. Getting some training in, Ketra? Can't pretend I'm surprised. You swing that hammer better than I could. Better than almost anyone could. Once you get going with it, only a fool would even think about standing in your way. Not to interrupt you, Bernies, but you're sounding an awful lot like my aunt right now. Your what? You know, like my mom's sister. I ended up living with her for a while after my parents died. They always used to tell me I should learn how to ride, you know? But this hammer was the only thing I ever had eyes for. Whoops, hit my mic. Whenever I started having second thoughts, my aunt was there to insist I made the right choice. It's kind of like me, a bit rough around the edges, you know. Never turned down a chance to help me train, either. Sounds like she and I would get along. I just hope she's okay out there. Sure she is, and I bet she'd be thrilled to know you're getting even better with that hammer. Of course. What do you say? We have ourselves a little one-on-one. -on -one. See what we can do. I'd like that very much, Berenice. That's the spirit. Now come on, I'll have you stronger before you know it. So many conversations in this area. On that fine morning blessed by the Father's divine grace. I think a short rest is in order to celebrate the occasion. Perhaps on that boulder over there. Ah, how lovely. That's not a boulder, that's Bruno. <laughs> the hell you think you're doing? My word, did the boulder just speak to me? Who are you calling a boulder? I meant no harm, oh talking rock. Wait, is that you, Bruno? Of course it is, but I get the feeling you thought otherwise. What? No, I would never confuse your muscular back for mere stone. Well, I suppose there's no point attempting to hide it. Forgive me for leaning on you. Ugh, that's fine. It's kind of my fault too for crouching down like that. Sorry for scaring you, Sharon. What were you doing over there, if you don't mind me asking? A cat. What was that? Found a cat, okay? Poor thing was hurting real bad, so I figured I'd try and fix him up. What an adorable little kitten he is. Assuming you don't mind, I would be glad to heal him with some of my magic. With my help, your friend here will be back on his paws in no time. I, uh, yeah, go right ahead. Thank you, Bruno. It'll just be a minute. Cute. Chloe and Hodrick. All this I could do. No, we just had that two days ago. Something the matter, Chloe? Oh, Sir Hodrick, just thinking about what to make- Is Chloe's only personality, like, cooking dinner? <laughs> That's all she's doing in all of her support conversations. Thinking about what to make for dinner tonight. There are only so many ingredients we can keep around in wartime, but I'd still like to include some variety if I can. I assure you, Chloe, this army will appreciate anything you make, no matter what it is. After all, your cooking is one of the few respites we have from the ceaseless toils of this war. And I'm honored to help, truly. But considering what we have in the stores, I fear we're doomed to the same meal we had two nights ago. We only had a new ingredient to work with. Now that you mention it, I have heard tale of garlic being grown in a nearby town. Oh, we haven't had garlic in ages. I tried to provide a different enough flavor, even if everything else stays the same. In that case, wait right here, I'll fetch some. I couldn't dare ask that of you, sir. Please, there's no trouble at all. I happen to love garlic myself, so I'll be looking forward to tonight's dinner even more than usual. How do they not have garlic every day? That's insane. I can't tell if he really loves it or if he's just being nice. 
What kind of food do you eat that doesn't have garlic? Wolf and Morden. Well then, it's about time I get to bed. You're joking, right? Not even a child goes to sleep this early. Besides, we still got an entire bottle of wine left. Forgive me, Morden. My daily routine starts rather early in the morning. Huh. First you were acting like a kid and now you're sounding older than I do. What's so important that you'd have to skip out on a nice drink to wake up for it? To, be to begin with, I plan to meditate in a nearby grove. Then I'll check the traps I've laid in the area patrolling the perimeter of camp all the while. After that, I intend to examine my equipment before moving on to a bit of archery practice. Alright, alright, I get it. I'm used to drinking by myself anyway. Not sure I understand your frustration, Morden. I've already shared a glass with you. What do you say we both turn in now instead and you can come accompany me in the morning? I'd say you've lost it. There's not a chance I'm getting to sleep this early. Well, you'll never know unless you try. Come, let's put that bottle away. You gotta be kidding me. Get your damn hands off my wine. There's nothing quite like a brisk morning breeze, huh? You, maybe. I'm suffering over here. Uh -huh. How old is Rolf? I feel like Rolf is old, older than everyone else. Uh... There's a conversation down there, so I'll go there next. Dane and Kitra. Kitra, that hammer you're carrying. What about it? Is it not different from the one you would normally wield? I can't say I remember seeing such intricate carvings on its handle. Hey, you're right. I must have grabbed the wrong one from the armory this morning. Is there a reason you don't keep your weapon at your side as most of our soldiers do? Well, the hammer's not like most other weapons. I can barely even fit the thing in my tent. Besides, sleeping next to something I've used for war would just give me nightmares, you know. Now that you have me considering whether... Now you have me considering whether I should even be keeping my sword with me. I'd say so. I mean, you still gotta sharpen it and stuff, right? I don't have to do anything like that myself. It seems the armory is a fair choice. Though, taking the wrong weapon by mistake could, certainly could cause problems for battle to strike. Right, I almost forgot. Someone's probably out there looking for them. Better go give it back to him. Oh, and thanks for noticing, Prince. Come to think of it, the armory tent does hold a fair number of hammers. Perhaps Joseph would know a method of quickly telling them apart. Write everyone's names along the sides of it. Okay, Elena Nina. Wait, no, uh... Is everything alright, Nina? Are you in danger? I'm okay, I think. But my omelet is surely is it? A small piece of eggshell fell into the pan while I was cooking. I grew so flustered that I dropped the entire thing on the floor. Which explains the cacophony I heard as I was rushing over. Rather an artful mistake, I must say. There was nothing artful about it, though now that I think about it, perhaps the curse I put on you has come back to haunt me instead. Ah yes, the hope that I would be plagued by failed omelets for the rest of my life. I recall you uttered quite the insult as well. I'm sorry for it. That's not how I want to live, nor how I wish to treat my allies. You know, Nina, I've heard a piece of eggshell every now and then can, prov can provide ample nutritional benefit. Everything seems to have remained safely in the pan as well, per perfectly unharmed despite its abrupt introduction to the floor. But you see, there's nothing to be upset about, not in the slightest. I appreciate your saying so, your highness. You're right, I can still salvage this meal yet. That's precisely what I plan to do. Thank you for helping me pull myself back together. Well, nothing at all. Now, if you need of a hand, I know an idle young prince who may be willing to lend. You truly do that for me? But of course, after such a fine opening act, I wouldn't dare miss the conclusion for all the world. If you put it like that, I expect it might be nice to have a bit of company. Let us begin at once. Yes, your highness. Though first, I'm sorry for putting that curse on you. Pay it no mind, Nina. The only matter I've time for now is watching a master chef conduct her work. Prepare to be amazed, my loyal assistant. Fine, she redeemed herself a little. How many more do I have to do? Ooh. Okay, so I wiped out a bunch here. Still so much to go through. And it's crazy that even though I've reached rapport level 1 with some characters, they're already in like plans that I don't have access to. Which means I might have raised rapport too early, but oh well. Wait, wait, I missed two here? Wait, wait, wait. Missed two. We'll get those two. All then. Gotta say, I didn't think people this damn nice were really out there. Hmm? Who's it you speak of? Haha, <laughs> I'm talking about you, boss. 
I mean, who ever heard of a guy asking an enemy soldier to join up with him? I just sworn you had the sense knocked flat out of you. To me, that kind of mercy is what's been a king of what being a king is all about. Enough of this, I beg you. Stand before you a prince, Aubin, and only then through the constant aid of my entire army. Ah, good to see you staying humble about it. But you really are different, boss. The rest of the world treats us mercs no better than dirt, just paying us our gold then sending us to die. You though, we get given the same kind of respect that any knight. I didn't realize that was so unusual. Yet my reason for hiring, hiring you was simply because I felt you deserved my trust, not for any sense of moral superiority. <laughs> sure it was. As you said before, it is only coin which motivates your support of the Liberation's cause. I swear to you now, you shall have all your coin and much more once Cornea has returned to its proper ruler. Oh, uh, good. Looking forward to it. Yo, he wants friendship more than coins. I haven't talked to any. Okay, Monica and Melisandre. Is that you, Monica? It feels like it's been ages since we last saw each other. Good day, Lady, Lady Melisandre. I heard your house had aligned itself with the Liberation, but I never expected to see you march amidst our ranks yourself. No lady with you, just an old friend. Well, I'll admit, it's hard to think that ten years have passed since the banquet at half snore time. A lot has changed in that time, of course. But I'm glad to see your hair is just as radiant a gold as all. You've remained much the same as well, Melisandre. What do you mean? Even in our youth, it was obvious you were never quite like the other noble. While you may have struggled with decorum at times, you bore a keen eye for seeing matters as they truly Did I now? Tell me, do you recall what happened the eve of that banquet? A thief found his way into the manor proper, past every last one of our skillful sentries. And while the rest of us strive to understand how, your gaze never left a quiet young gentleman in, audience, in attendance. At the time, it seemed as though you were simply infatuated with him. Yet, it later grew clear that he was the one who helped the thief. In. Somehow, you had suspected the man from the very beginning. Had I? I can't remember... I can't say I remember it myself. And though I welcome the praise, we both know what happened afterward. I sided with Zenoira rather than defend my home. But please, don't act like I'm some wonderful judge of character. You insist. I feel like Melisandre only did that because she's like boy crazy. Like, ho ho! A man! Oh, I forgot to complete one quest. Oh. It's rapport conversation. Is everyone in your family able to write Griffin's friend? Just me, actually. Though my house has historically been known for such feats. Tradition that any girl who's born into the family seeks to join the Knights of the Rose. But ultimately, the Order will only take the best Griffin riders we have to meet. Every couple of years, the house holds a trial to determine who that is. A test of skill to prove yourselves ready. This is an intriguing method indeed. It is. My cousin and I all took Garrus together a while back. But it turned out I was the only suitable candidate. Has the others all failed to command the Griffins? Yes, one of my cousins ended up crashing into a tree, severely injuring herself in the process. Another let their griffin run loose through our manor, tearing apart room by room as it went. We barely call it a proper trial at all. No, I suppose not. To be honest, I didn't even ride particularly well myself. I was only deemed the best in our house by virtue of not being as horrible as everyone else. But I knew the shame it would bring our family if I failed to gain admission into the Knights of Rome. I trained tirelessly day after day until I was able to prove my merit and join the Order in true. Early that dedication which sees you thriving now for the liberation as well. Not sure thriving is the best word, but I appreciate you, you saying so, even if it's not entirely true. I feel like I get. Oh no, that's Unicorn Overlord. Woohoo! That's why I didn't complete that battle. Oh, this is the one I didn't do. Let's move back down here. <gasps> so many conversations! Clive and Monica. Evening, Clive. Ah, Monica, what is it? You always stare at the ground when you're speaking to someone. It's rude, you know. Not that I don't wish to meet your gaze, of course. It's merely... Enough, Clive. I know you had your reasons for deceiving me, as did my grandfather. What's done is done. Be that as it may, it doesn't change the manner in which it wronged you. Well, I won't argue with that. It was rather uncivil of you. But bearing a grudge does me little good, knowing you only did what you thought was best. Unless there's something else you feel guilty about, of course. Should I be worried? Please, it's nothing as, nothing as substantial as that. 
I was merely struck by how unchanged you seem, despite the ever-looming threat of war. Even now, your iron will is as apparent in your eyes as it always has been. It is beautiful, I must admit. I don't know what to say, Clive. Let's say nothing at all. Even should you forgive my failings, I have no right to stand at your side ever again. Changed as well. Years past, I could never have foreseen you standing tall against the might of Zenoira like this. Suppose not, no. Oh, he still finds her beautiful. We're gonna have all the blonde baby. Ivan Hojo. Ah! Your work is excellent, Clive. I see now why Joseph have, has placed his trust in you. Ah, Sir Hodrick. Great honor to earn such praise from a distinguished member of the Royal Guard. Former member, you mean. You and I stand as equals now, nothing more. In that case, might you permit me a minor request? What is it? Well, I was wondering if you could instruct me in the art of the spear. Your noble house, DuPont, known as, is known as home to the foremost experts in the craft, after all. It's also rumored that many of your techniques have never been taught to anyone outside your lineage. I should love to see that mastery in action if you can. Such is the only way I shall surpass my father and see that the tragedy which befell my family never again comes to me. Yes, I have no cause to refuse the offspring of a knight as proud and noble as he. Moreover, I imagine there shall be much for me to learn from you. Now then, the greatest mentor teaches not through words, but action. Precisely what I hope to hear. Let us spar, Sir Hodrick. I only pray you're ready for the storm which approaches. Whoa, Hodrick, you're moving so fast. Against the horse. Allow me to thank you once more for granting us refuge in your army, my prince. It says nothing that demands gratitude, Cole. Your aid is a most welcome boon in these difficult times. And what a lady Melisandre. I pray she hasn't given you too much trouble. Not particularly, no. Ah, that's a relief to hear. Strange, I would have expected her to pursue him day and night in search of a marriage proposal or even a mere lover's tryst. Is a concern for the prince which stays her hand or perhaps an uncharacteristic bout of shyness? Cole? Whatever the case, it's best I, I not interfere in the affairs of her heart. Pardon me for saying, sir, but I trust you'll treat my lady with all the love and kindness that she deserves. I can manage no less. You do me in my role as her commander, yes? You are a fine attendant indeed, Cole. It's plain to see how deeply you care for her. Certain such loyalty provides great comfort uh, in her times of need, much as Joseph does for me. Ah, uh, how I wish that were true. While I may still stand in her service for now, Lady Melisandre is already a woman. It demands every ounce of effort I have to ensure my counsel does not come across as intrusive or overbearing. Hmm, I wonder if Joseph bears the same worries about regarding our relationship. Thank you, Colm. I shall speak with him tonight and allay whatever concerns he may be bearing. It's a wonderful idea, my prince. I'm certain he'll be pleased to know how you feel. Thinking on it now, I suppose my lady does the same thing at times. Perhaps it is that sheer kindness which makes her and the prince such an ideal match for one another. It's not happening. Not happening, my god. But you. Here, Morden and Kitra. Mighty fine statue they've got here. Morden? I didn't think you'd be into this kind of stuff. Not really. Do don't have much eye for art or aesthetic. I was just admiring the quality of the stone, is all. Huh. It looks the same as any other statue to me. I figured it would, yeah. But the only reason it's held up this well is because of the material it was built out of. You can tell that just from looking at it? Yep, used to be a stonemason myself, you know. One good glance and you start noticing little differences. The texture, the color, that kind of thing. At least once the paint's all worn off like this. What kind of stone did they use for this? Alcedone, as far as I can tell. Sadani? You mine some of the stuff over in Albion. Last centuries or so, they say. It must have been tough carving it all up detailed like this. I guess there's more to the craft than I realized. And now I gotta wonder, what about my hammer? That would be corsite from the look of it. A little on the softer side, and pretty easy to work with too. That's why you see it in all sorts of buildings and everyday tools. I know a lot about this stuff, Morden. Especially for an old drunk. Did you really have to put it like that? I wish all the conversations would be short like that. Um, I see there's a couple straggler conversations here. Yeah. Ooh. I'm making decent progress. Ivan Morden. 
You there, kid. Ah, Morden, was it? That's what they call me. Anyway, you notice you've got a nice big chip on that lance of yours? I do now, yes. It would seem I'll need to procure a new one when next we're in town. If you're talking about buying? <laughs> At least let me take a look first. Should be an easy fix, and if anyone can do it, it's an old stowed mason like me. I'd much appreciate that, thank you. Go right ahead. There you are, good as new. What craftsmanship. You've done finer work than even my preferred blacksmith. Ah, glad to hear it. Now let's talk fees. Hold a moment, you mean to demand gold from me? What do you think, this is a charity job? All I'm asking for is a bit of drinking money. And when you really think about it, this is still plenty cheaper than buying a whole new weapon. Ugh, it's mine, you keep your wits about you, hmm? Ah, no need to worry about me, kid. I've been swimming in ale since before you were born. Charlotte and Chloe. Girls! Gorgeous, isn't it? I almost forget we're at war, staring out at the water like this. Me too. It's been too long since we have the chance to breathe, you know? It has. Listen, Scarlet, you don't need to spend the entire day pouting just because His Majesty did. Huh. I know he's busy as well, but I still can't believe he would turn you down so easily. Would you like me to let yell at him for you? No need to do that, Chloe, though I do appreciate the offer. It just makes me a little anxious. Understandably so. Things are nothing like how you, they used to be on Galavia. Life was so easy then. So fun. Now here he is, marching us to a brighter future while I'm struggling just to follow in his wake. Enough of this modesty, Scarlet. You have a beautiful heart, pure and clear as this very lake. One of these days, His Majesty is going to realize that. Talking beauty, I think you have me beat, Chloe. You know I'm the one who's supposed to be consoling you, right? Anyway, care to eat something? I packed a nice big lunch for before we left. That would be lovely. I know they're aiming for the Elaine Scarlet uh, angle, but nope. I'm not gonna do that. Here we go. Ooh, I didn't fight you. Give me money. Ha! Money got. Now I circled back around, Clive and Renault. Great honor to take arms with you once more, Sir Renault. Indeed it is, and the innocent boy I once knew has now grown into a gallant young man. It was either that or perish in despair. I've witnessed great horrors these last ten years. Mountains of bodies reaching nigh to the heavens themselves. At times I wonder what right have I to survive amidst so many dead. Thought alone has nearly consumed me. I understand your pain, Clive. In the past, I myself have fallen prey to that very line of thinking. Before me stands a man of great virtue, a knight bold and courageous in defense of his people. The least I can offer the memory of the fall. Is that not what drives you as well, Sir Renault? Redemption for those you fail to save? Quite right, though I owe my awareness of that entirely to you. I appreciate you saying as much. By the by, I found it rather emotional, tasting your cooking after all these years. The flavor alone calls to my memories of our training together and the stirred warmth of your careful and the joy I've truthfully not felt in you. Thank you, sir, both for then and for now. It's peculiar. I once thought to abandon this march should my presence ever prove too great a burden. Burden. Yet now I seem to bear the opposite effect in time. I'll not complain, though. No, I shall meet this newfound esteem, fiction, pride of my own. And I shall see you never feel troubled again. Mentor Menti! Adele and Melisandre. I interest you flowers, fair knight. More fresh vegetables picked this morning? I appreciate the offers, I truly do, but, um... What are you still doing in town, Adele? Your mother's worried sick about you. Sorry, my mother? Ugh, I should have known not to let you run off alone. You have to get home at once. Um, Melisandre, what's the meaning of this? You needed help, didn't you? And you seem far too flustered to resolve the situation on your own. I suppose that's fair. Bill, why make us out to be siblings? I think it quite obvious, our hair color is almost identical. No one would even raise an eyebrow at such a suggestion. And judging by your mannerism, I imagine you don't have any real sisters. Ah, wasn't that obvious? You're right, though. I can't quite act the part if I've never actually experienced it. I wonder if this is what it's really like having a sister. 
Ugh, how could you even imagine it? I'm such a sickly dis- I didn't think it- that offensive. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, Melisandre is pretty quick at observing people. Give her that. Um... Let's go here. Oh my gosh, it's been 41 minutes, and I'm- I still have half of this country to go. Oh my gosh. Also, another mercenary. This is just gonna be one whole long video in itself. So, what do you think? In all honesty, it feels rather different than what I'm used to. No surprise there, a big sword like this is a whole nother beast. If you never trained with one, you'll be all worn out after just a swing or two. As I've noticed, yes. But hey, that's nothing a bit of practice can't solve. Perhaps so, yet I believe I'll be better off persisting with my current blade. Well, as long as you've got something you're happy with, better to be a specialist than try and spread yourself too thin. Thinking exactly. Though at times I've wondered if I should learn a variety of weapons without to any situation we might come across. It's no small thing, being that versatile. But if you're a real expert, you don't need to adapt. You overcome. By an expert, do you happen to be speaking of yourself? Sorry? I've has noted your talent for that very phenomenon, Berenice. Confidence with which you cut down mountain opponents, despite your inherent difficulty. I've witnessed it often as well. And I must admit, the skill you bear with the blade has seen you turn even the most dire of situations into Easy there, Elaine. I didn't say all that just to fish for compliments. Any more of that and I might have started blushing. My point is, don't worry about how many weapons you can use. Focus on one and see where it takes you. I'll do th just that then. Thank you, Berenice. Anytime. Now come on, we've got training to get back to. Uh, up or down? Let's go down. I'll teleport back up. Oh, the swamp! I'd always believed you made it out alive, but it's still a shock to see you actually standing here in the and a personal advisor to the prince still. That's been far too long, Lady Yana. Why the formality, Joseph? Is it uncomfortable having an ally who knew you when you were just a child? It is indeed, especially given the endless trouble my younger self made for you. I remember it well, even after all these years. And every time I scolded you for acting out, you turn around and do something worse the next day. Like the time you hung jars from transparent strings to make it seem like a sorcerer had invaded the castle. Or the time you hid in one of the suits of armor which lined the halls just so you could jump out and scare me as I went by. This was all before you'd become a squire, of course. And still. Between you and Hodric, we had no shortage of troublemakers roaming the castle during King Gerard's reign. But if nothing else, at least the two of you kept things interesting. It's a relief to hear you say so, but I must ask that you never speak a word of these matters to anyone else. Don't worry, Joseph, I'll take these stories with me to the grave. Though, it's funny to think about. All that mischief you used to get into, yet here you are having raised the prince to a respectable young man. I desire... deserve no credit. Yeah, no. Such character is in his very nature, and any other growth owes to the friend while living on. Though you say, but mere friends can never replace the father figure you... Or the time you spent bringing the joy back into that lonely child's life. And Yana. Good day, Lady Yana. Ain't to you, my little Hodrick. But tell me, is there a reason you seem so flustered? Well, tis merely... Go on. If you have something to say, then come out and say it. Um, in truth, your choice of clothing is rather revealing, is it not? Is that what all this fuss is about? I much prefer the mobility it provides, especially compared to a bulky suit of armor like you. Besides, you can always just look away if you don't like it. As for me, I plan to enjoy my newfound youth however I please, and wearing these clothes is but one part of that. After all, they wouldn't quite suit a wizened old court sorcerer, would they? I suppose not. In that case, I shall- whoops, I skipped it. Really, we should all be able to wear exactly what we want. That includes you, my little Hodrick. Have you ever considered taking off all that stuffy metal for a moment? I could do no such thing. The day I removed my armor is the day I failed my duty as the shield of the liberation. Somehow I knew it'd say that. Point how many honor I have. 192. Wow. So much. I 
Tatiana? Who are you speaking to just now? Oh, me and one of the swamps resident crows. Who verse with crows? What kind of which would I be if I couldn't? Being with animals is one of the first things we had what to do. Sorry, just a little joke. It was actually an acquaintance from the village who's transformed into a crow. And I can't talk to horses or griffins either, in case you were wondering. Yes, that would have been rather surprising. But I have to wonder, why did that witch decide to turn a bird? Word of mobility, according to her. That and the desire to change who she was. All too common here in the swamp. Many of my apprentices have left to start new lives as different animals entirely. While there's nothing wrong with doing so per se, I find it all to be a bit of a shame. Only one you exist in the world, and I can reason for wanting to discard that. Haven't you ever wished to become someone else, Yana? In a sense, I suppose. Years ago, I wished to grow into a powerful sorceress just like my old master. That didn't mean I ever wanted to. Such dreams only become reality through the inner strength you bear deeply. And once you've achieved them, you can take pride in knowing it was your effort which got you there and your... That's actually why I joined the Liberation to begin with, to find the dream I was willing to pursue. But while the journey ahead might yet be long, I'm proud of myself for even taking the first step. As you should be. Whoa. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going. Winding wood. As the other swamp, it is. Uh, I'd be glad to show the way. Nope, I'm not going. I'm not going. Thought there was another, um. There was another. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's an Albion. Yeah, I'm not going there. Uh, back up. That was danger sauce. Oh, let me just... Urgh. That was a rather impressive sigh there, Monica. Is something the matter? Apologies, my prince. I didn't expect anyone to actually hear that. And I'll have you know it's sometimes best to leave a woman to her misery. Forgive me. I merely thought to offer my help if you need. That's very kind of you. As it so happens, I've received a letter from my grandfather, one which details every last aspect of the very machinations Clive mentioned. He wanted to thank me, to apologize as well. Needless to say, I've already come to terms with the reality of this issue. But if he truly thinks a letter is enough to repress his failing, then he's dearly mistaken. To your point, yes. Despite his impulsiveness, my grandfather is surely, is surely well-intentioned at heart, and not a little too cunning for his Sadly, he and his ilk are an incredibly rare breed of of our nation. As far as I can remember, the man has cared more for card games and horseback riding than inheritances or decorum. And as thoughtless as he can be at times, he's already always ready to risk his own well-being for the sake. Just as he did when he chose to fund the liberation behind his back. In all honesty, it's a miracle the old fox has lived. I think I understand the reason for that sigh now. It was one of concern for your grandfather's sake. Enough about the sigh already. Oh, and I appreciate it if you kept this matter to yourself while you're at it. Stop talking about your grandpa. I get it. Stop it. Oh man. Re conversation. Hello there, Renault. Regarding our training earlier. Highness, please, you ought not make a habit of engaging conversation. Here you may mistakenly be struck by a stone originally intended for me. Someone has been casting rocks at you? Not yet, but many in these lands surely harbor great resentment for the deeds I and should a stone come your way, I shall parry it and advise the culprit to never do such things again. Nobody deserves to live under the constant threat of attack, Renault. That includes you. Forgive me the impudence, your highness. But at times, uh, that kindness is akin to a thorn in my heart, driving itself deeper with every word. Save your sympathy for one who's worthy of it, rather than waste its blessings on me. I. Never plagued by guilt, I see. Yet you, Renault, did nothing wrong. Perhaps not consciously, but I can never forgive myself the sins committed in my name. And allow me to do so in your stead. When you stand at my side, I want you to think only of what's to come and forget the full wrongs of your- Why are you doing this for me, your highness? As I'm certain you're aware, Zenoira's magic robs its prey of their very lives. Yet those afflicted are not at fault for what transpires under evil's grasp. They too are victims of- I refuse to abandon them as the rest of the world has. No, I wish to help. I understand, your highness. I shall respect those wishes in whatever manner possible. In your presence, I shall once more serve as a knight of my people, just as I did so many years ago. This, Alpina okay, Nadell. Just the best leader any of us could have asked for. 
That's quite enough eulogizing for one evening, Adele. And perhaps you should consider laying off the ale as well. But you agree with me, don't you? You gotta. I mean, imagine being younger than us and leading a whole army by yourself. Might sound kind of weird to say, but I'm proud of him, you know? I like him, it's gonna be a great king. Sure of it. Dan, what's annoyed about? Long live the amazing King Elaine. No, please, there can be no telling what enemy soldiers might lie with your shot. Oh, um, it's a fine evening we're having, is it not? Your Highness, what are you doing here? Now this was worth coming to town for. A word, Adele. Please, tell me you didn't hear all that. I mean, ahem. <clears throat> your pension for a drunken outburst has finally caught up to you. Forgive me, your highness. I'll not touch another drop of veil again, I promise. Calm yourself, Adele. I wasn't planning to scold. In fact, I'm glad to hear how highly you think of me. If not, a bit embarrassed by it. Thank you for saying so, your highness. You're lucky he's as generous a man as he is, Adele. Anyone else and you would have been cast from our army entirely. But why were Clive and Berenice there? It wasn't a one-on-one. Old and Sham. Ah, what a quandary. It would seem Lady Melisandre hardly has a change of clothes left. I could always hire a tailor in town, of course, but such a humble attire would ill fit her noble stature. Something the matter, Colm? What fine timing, Lady Sharon. Might I trouble you for a moment of your wisdom? The issue is... Have you ever thought about making her clothes yourself? Sorry, me? But I've not even the skill of an amateur, and these weathered hands are far past our days of holding a needle. Granted, I could attempt it, yet I fear it would take me years before I produced anything actually worth wearing. It's never too late to take up a new hobby, Colm. Besides, there's not a man alive more dedicated to Melisandre than you. Which means none can possibly offer the caring, attentive tailorship that you- But am I truly capable of such artistry? You are, and I'm certain the father himself will see it that you succeed. Thank you, Lady Sharon. Today, you have stoked this flame of servitude which burns deep within my breast. And as you say, age is not but an excuse for the weak of heart. Mark my words, from this moment forth, I shall become the greatest tailor the world has ever seen. I've seen him that inspired before. Let's just pray it doesn't have too severe an impact on his other work. Adele and Clyde. Oh, a shiny spot. Oh, but that's across the river. I can't go. Hmm. Ah. You know, Adele, training like this delivers my mind straight to our days coming through the order. I was just thinking the same thing. I'm amazed we even survived it. Master Clive. Even the slowest foot soldier could dodge such language thrust. Understood, sir. You're lacking accuracy, Adele. Speed means nothing if you can't even land a simple blow. Thank you, sir. That's enough for now. Convene with the infantry joint for maneuvers. Or joint maneuvers. Move! Rick, though he might have been, the captain bore great kindness as well. Do you remember the days the Noira invaded our province? He sent us to the rear guard and took to the front line himself to lead the urge. I was furious, sick of being treated like a damn child who could barely hold a spear. But I realize now, it wasn't lack of confidence that motivated the command. He was protecting us. Indeed, the captain entrusted us with the future of our order and the future of Fedrith. It's the only reason we stand here today. Difficult as it was at the time, we owe him our lives. So many have lost friends and family to this war, losses which must be avenged. Strength is the only way we'll see it happen. In a degree more. We must further hone our spears, as the captain said, and do proud those who kept faith in us, most of all. Come, Clive, we got training to do. Oh, their horses do a little thing before they stab. How hours do I have now? 204. Okay, so I only did 12 conversations. Clive and Joseph. Here we are, the province of the Ash and Blue. Ten long years have passed since that fateful day, yet I finally returned. Owing wholly to you, yes. Have you not persevered in pursuing my foolish dream, the moment would ever have remained mere fantasy. Yet I was only willing to do so because I had nothing left to hold dear. Aid Zenora seized these lands, I lost everything. Indeed, through, though without your father's bold defiance, I wager you'd not be standing here now. All the same, perhaps surrender would have been the wiser course of action. 
Zenora slaughtered the entire house as punishment. My mother, sister, even our retainers were put to the sword. The only soul spared was me. I often wonder, Sir Joseph, was my father's decision the correct one? Not only was our family slain, but the very province he sought to protect fell to Zenora in a matter of days. It is a question which besets my mind uh, nigh every time I close my eyes. Yet perhaps that's why I find it easier to simply march forth spear in hand. I can only assume I inherited such stubbornness from my father. Even so, I would not see you held prisoner to your father. Your deeds have saved a great many in these lands. They shall see you save a great many more before the war is concluded. You understand, Clive? You. Thank you, Sir Joseph. Yeah, it was a bad idea to, like, batch do all these rapports all at once. I should have split them up. Off you go. Did she just kill a chicken? Ah! Petra, stop. You mustn't harm those poor animals. Just look at how safely they landed the other side. Don't worry, Sharon. I'm not hurting them. Just sit back and watch, yeah? What? Ah! Anyway, those chickens were just staring at the river when I got here, almost like they were trying to find a way across. But I figured I'd help, and a quick couple of smacks was a lot faster than trying to get them all over to a bridge. That's quite the method, yes, but it appears to have been an effective one, if nothing else. I must say, I'm always surprised to see the power of your slender frame as capable of producing. I can't imagine the harsh training you must have gone through to reach this point. I wouldn't call it training, really. I was mostly just messed around when I was a kid. Hacking my friends with pillows, or catching huge fish with my bare hands. No wonder I ended up going for the hammer after that. I mean, it's basically the same kind of stuff, just with metal now. My parents never came around to it, though, kept trying to get me to ride a horse like a proper knight. A familiar struggle. But in my eyes, Kitra, you're every ounce the knight they wished you would become, and much more. Let's hope they agree with you on that. That was amusing. Okay. Um. Uh huh. I thought it was across the river, but it's here. Carla and Lassan. No, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Here we are then. Are you ready to begin? We really have to do this, Melisandre? Sorry to say we do. As Elaine's old friend and my greatest rival for his heart, I have no choice but to defeat you. Now come, today we learn who can best fashion the ensemble Elaine likes best. What a gorgeous pendant. Do you mind? I saw it first. Liar, you were just off buying a necklace at the shop next door. Very well, I'll just have to settle for the bracelet beside it then. That's the one I was looking at. It matches Elaine's eye color almost perfectly. I was thinking the same thing, actually. Fine, you can have it. It will look better on you anyway. You sure? I am, but I want that sapphire brooch instead. Ugh, why do our tastes have to be so similar? It's strange, Scarlet. Despite the competition, I rather enjoyed shopping with you. Let's die. Let's do it again sometime, but maybe as friends instead of enemies. Okay, that was cute. Long time no see, Morden. Sure is. I was starting to wonder if you'd gone and got yourself killed. Yeah, like that would happen. Never thought I'd find you with the liberation, though, and working for free, no less. I could say the same thing about you. You're not exactly what I'd call a righteous war kind of girl, after all. I didn't used to be, not till I met Elaine. There's something different about him, a real fire in his eyes. It's sounding to me like you've fallen for the kid. Maybe I have. Ah, next you'll tell me you saw a swine sprout wings and fly off into the sunset. Hilarious, Morden. Really, though, it's been years since I've actually enjoyed fighting like this. Years since I found someone strong enough to keep up with me. Hmm, well, I'm happy to hear it. But you're wrong about me working for free. Once that kid is sitting on the throne, he's gonna pay me back for everything I've done. Best you wait. I'll be sleeping on a bed of solid gold, holding me tight to the finest meat this land has ever seen. That's more like the Morden. If your bed is made out of solid gold, that's a waste of gold. Might as well spend it. Okay. Naren and Ocleese. Lady Ocleese, I hadn't realized you had joined the Liberation as well. 
Yes, my dear Sharon, now that I have, we can be together once more. Wait, is that a flower crown you're carrying? It is, made with the same kind of blossoms as the one you, you gave me when we first met. You really were the most charming person I'd ever encountered. I still remember the delicate way you approached me, asking if I had lost my flower crowns. Well, of course, every angel I had seen in the scriptures was known wearing one. And when I saw you alone in the middle of the forest, I assumed you had simply misplaced yours. Rather shameful memory thinking of it now. Holy texts weren't entirely wrong, though. We do wear such ornaments during certain ceremonies. Whoever penned the tomes must have been a remarkable human. Though I must admit, Sharon, I far prefer the crown you made to those of my. Now observe this dream blossom, capable of transforming a sunny afternoon into the darkest of night. Just messed with this sun. Cool. Raise your head and gaze upon the flickering lights of the endless expanse. Beautiful, at least, just as I remember them being all those years ago. It's almost like we've been thrown back in time in the days of our youth. Indeed, often did I wish to enjoy these sights together while we were apart. Yeah, we can, whenever we want. I feel like Oclise has a thing for Sharon. Lex and Sharon. Such abundant wounds. Hadn't Sir Hodra taught you better than this? Always remain calm and always be cautious. Those are the first rules of any combat. Well, yeah, but ow. I just can't help myself when I see people in danger. But hey, at least I'm the only one who got hurt. Would have been totally fine too if those other guys hadn't been hiding in the bushes waiting to get the jump on me. All for those you've never even met. I think I see now why Elaine trusts you so implicitly. You're like a sturdy shield parrying away blades and arrows that come in our direction. One who gives the strength to fight on. Uh, despite our lesser number. Who, me? I do like the sign of that. At times I find it such a magnificent sight that I can't simply can't avert my gaze. You wear that heavy armor, yet move with such swiftness. All to stand in defense of those who need it most. But remember, you'll just make us worry if you try to do everything yourself. Special Lex, both to our army and to me. Where have you been, Lex? His Majesty is- Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were still getting treatment. It's finished, actually. But he'll need to take it easy for a while to give his wounds a chance to heal. He might recover quicker than most, Lex, but pain will strike if you aren't careful. Now go. I'll be praying for your continued safety in the meantime. Thanks for everything, Sharon. And come on, Lex, we can't keep his Majesty waiting. Any day now. I, uh, yeah, sorry. Coming. Uh, Lex has a crush. Phew. Any normal guy would fall head over heels hearing stuff like that. Good thing I'm not a normal guy. Or, I'm sure she was just being friendly. What are you muttering about over there? Oh, dang. Sharon like him? Was she just being friendly? We will never. Okay, so keep going left. I'm almost done. I'm almost done! Osh and Berdenis. I say you got it back in there, Osh. Sorry? I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about. Yeah, figures you didn't even realize that was happening. Enemy came up behind you in that last battle. You smacked him away without so much as thinking about it. Didn't even use your staff, just a fist. I suppose my left hand does ache a bit. Knock the guy out cold, too. Pretty good work for a fluke, if you ask me. You gotta tap into that skill, Aush. Turn you up into a real bruiser. Please never stand that close to me again. Think you don't want to learn how to fight? Game. I'd be glad to teach you. I'll not be undergoing any martial instruction, thank you. Not enough time to hone my sorcery as it stands. Oh, come on. A little muscle will give that magic of yours all the oomph you could ever need. Now quit your complaining and let's get started already. Please, though, no, summon help! Mother! I think I'm gonna enjoy this. No, leave Aush alone. He's just a baby loser boy. Travis at. I didn't know it wouldn't be that easy. I want the negotiations, Travis. Not so good, sorry to say. With the world we're living in, no merc with their salt will ever join us on the cheap. An inevitable fact of life, I suppose. The tougher they are, the more they're gonna cost us, and not a one of them is willing to cut a deal. Sorry couldn't be much help. There's no problem at all. You do more for our war effort than I believe you realize. Not only are you the finest scout in all of Cornea, but a steady hand in even the most trying of time. Well, I'm glad to hear you say so. Yet alas, the Liberation's funds are rather limited. But ensuring we all have proper equipment shall be far more vital than hiring one or two costly persons. 
Let's return to this venture at another time. Right, I'll hold off on any further negotiations until then. Have my thanks, Travis. Certain you shall see this through soon enough. Well, okay. So they're not really like buddy buddy, but it's like, hey, how can we help the liberation? Chloe and Travis. Travis? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were reading there. More than a while. Did you need something? I did, but is that a new book you have? I can't rec say I recognize the cover. Oh yeah, I finished my last one a few days ago, then bought another over uh, in town. I can't exactly haul a library around, though, so I always end up selling my old books to fund new purchases. But wouldn't you rather at least keep the ones you love? My sister never parts ways with a book herself, even if she doesn't have room on the shelf for it. Ah, I almost forgot you had a sister. Glad to hear she's not quite as bloodthirsty as mine. Honestly, I was the same way back at home. I'd read all my favorites over and over again. Now I just write their names down in my notebook, along with anything else I want to remember about them. And once the war's over, maybe I can start actually building a collection again. I didn't realize they were that important to you, Travis. Yeah, well, I like keeping secrets when I can. Anyway, what was it you wanted to talk about? Oh, right. Dinner will be ready any minute now. Perfect, thanks. Just let me finish this chapter and I'll be right there. And yet again, talking about dinner. Ah, well, I don't want to walk. Hodrick and Joseph. Pardon the curiosity, Hodrick, but how are you feeling? Much better now, thank you. As you can see, I'm more than capable of... <sighs> Pray, rest a moment. Zenoria had their talents in you for far too many years. And though their spell may be broken, know not what ill effects it may have imparted on your body. A valid point, yes. Yet in truth, what pains me now is not some vague magical spasm, but the wounds I've received from fighting principal. Ah, worry not. I don't blame them for what happens. In fact, I'm rather grateful. And I am still impressed he managed to find a way past my armor. As am I. Yet his prowess does not surprise me, not after years of diligent work under my tutelage. It's nice to see your blade has not lost its brilliance either, Joseph. Nor shall it. Not until Corneas Dorn is ours once more. For now, Hodrick, tend to your wounds. We have a long road yet to work. Short and sweet. Thank you. Wait, is that a blue spot? No, it shouldn't be blue because... Yeah, I have people stationed. Chloe and Joseph. I pray my fears are unfounded, and yet... I believe it's best that we investigate, since to be truly certain if nothing else. As you say, Joseph, commence the search at once. I'll be done, your highness. Can I help you with something, Chloe? You seem to have been studying our conversation for some intrigue. Oh, it's nothing too important. I just can't help but notice how similar you and His Majesty look at times. Is that so? I hardly consider our appearances com comparable. Not like that. It's more your mannerisms, if anything. Things like the way you both put your hand to your chin when you're deep in thought. I can't say I've noticed such parallels. I suppose it makes sense that His Majesty would take after you, though. Not only did you teach him the blade, of course, but royal etiquette and demeanor. Indeed, I've endeavored to guide him in every manner possible these ten past ten years. Yet I often struggled in knowing how to best treat the young prince, a weakness stemming from the fact I never raised a child of my own. I say that, but that's exactly what you did with him, almost like a real father and son. If that be the case, I pray he's not inherited my flaws as well. Don't worry, I haven't noticed any, in either of you actually. But I will say, it's fun watching the two of you read scattering reports the exact same way. I should think you'd have more important things to focus on than our war consoles. Oh, I mean, I'm always listening, I swear it. Forgive me, Chloe, it was merely a joke. From you, sir? Take it as a symbol of trust if you wish, but do be careful not to grow complacent in our councils, hmm? No more honors! I know there are conversations the way, but let's finish up these here and then I'll travel to that island. Lex and Scarlet. Chloe? What's wrong, Chloe? Sorry, Lex. There's nothing I could do. Uh... Now, Chloe, is that any way to support her friends? Urgh. What's that small, Scarlet? Beef and goat milks do, of course. 
Louis taught me how to make it. Just some stew, huh? Wait, did you say you made it? Don't worry, I followed the recipe exactly like she told me. Might just be the best thing I've ever cooked. I think I'll call it the Scarlet Special. What do you think, Lex? You finally see me as the culinary goddess I am? Oh, I know. You can't judge it until you eat it, but of course. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the smell is more than enough to scare me off. Hey, Elaine, you gotta help me. <laughs> Some friend he is. After all the trouble I went make to making this for him, too. How utterly rude. You won't run for me, will you, Lex? No, I, would, I think you won't be running at all. When'd you get so strong? Now open wide. No, no stew! Anything but the stew! Ah! You. That was some dream. Oh, Lex! Just the person I was looking for. Stay away from me, monster! <laughs> that was hilarious. That was so funny. I love that one. Elsh and Melisandre. No, Elsh, you're actually quite handsome. If only you didn't hide it behind robes and hoods all the time. I'll thank you not to stare, please. My looks have always been a complicated matter in truth. How so? Well, I'm happy to say I share much of a uh, appearance with my late mother. But that only makes it obvious I'm her son, meaning my every failure is a blemish upon her name. Sometimes I wonder if a wretch like me even deserves her visage. Why not put in a little more effort then? At least then you could honor her memory in the process. No, a failure with a pretty face is still but a failure. I learned that shame at the many ceremonies I've attended honoring my brother's achievement. Every time people would ask me what I was capable of, what great feats I could perform, but I never had an answer. Even now, I've done nothing of note with my life. How cruel. A precious gem doesn't become so on its own. It needs to be polished and cared for, not smashed into a thousand pieces. Just believe in yourself, Aush. Believe that all your magic and your research will one day be worth it. Once you can do that, you'll come to like the way you look too. I'm sure of it. Well, hmm. Suppose it couldn't hurt to try. That's more like it. As for my part, I can't wait to see the new and improved you. That was sweet. That was nice. Where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eleven more. Eleven more! Aush and Solby. Ah, uh, the scholar Aush who once oversaw- Oops, I skipped it too early. And you're Solby, yes? Indeed, a simple nomad in the pursuit of knowledge, same you. I've heard some rather interesting tales from those who worked under your command. They claimed you were desperate for your mother's approval. That she was the only reason you ever took interest in ancient history to begin with. Is there something wrong with that? Oh, not at all. The opposite, in fact. See, I tend to grow so absorbed in my studies that I often neglect the world around me. Friends, family, everything. I was hoping you you might teach me. Show me what it means to care for something beyond your own self-interest. I'm not sure I'm qualified for that. I only ask one thing, i Speak to me about your mother. If I can better understand how you truly feel about her, perhaps I can learn to take advantage of such emotions myself. Strange. Most people simply grimace and walk off at my first mention of her, and they certainly never ask no more. Fascinating. Why is that, I wonder? I couldn't say, but I wouldn't mind talking about her if that's what you want. For one condition, you have to listen to every word of it, no leaving part way through. I think I'll be able to manage that. Selvi is interesting. Um, let's go to this random one. I can't travel? Why not? Fine. Oh, it's because I didn't liberate the town. Wait, what level are you? Wait, pig. On only lumber? Nope, Fortnite. I mean... Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, get away from me. Mental health. Yeah, that's one I have to do. Unsullied? Eager Timber, no! Oh my gosh! People constantly popping up at me. Really? No one could kill you? 
Oh wait, that means I can't even view this. Yeah, until the area has stabilized. Ah, no, go away. From wait, honors. Let me kill you. No one can kill him. Oh gosh, well you close. Okay, then we're teleporting away. Ah, cool. Lena Miriam. I'd request an audience for a moment, Your Highness. Didn't I already talk to her? Is this level two? But of course, what is it, Miriam? Well, I was merely wondering how you regard my work compared to that of the rest of our army. This is a surprising level of incertitude coming from you. Yet you needed to assess yourself by the feats of others. Everyone has their own natural strengths and you are no different. Is there a reason you seek such an answer? Forgive me, I folly, your highness. I know well that our army's only aim in this war is to vanquish Zenoira and restore its kingdom, uh, this kingdom to its proper rulers. It's the same conclusion I seek myself as well. But I've received a letter from my father this morning stating the importance of distinguishing my deeds from those of my peers. I suppose he's purely fixated on what plot at our house will, shall receive upon the end of this war. Recognition from the crown would prove a boon to any noble family, yes. This is a strange contradiction, is it not? Under normal circumstances, a knight is meant to protect their people. In times of strife, we are judged almost wholly on how many enemies we're able to slaughter. This is thought I very much despise and sooth. But it is also a necessary one should we ever wish to bring peace uh, to these afflicted lands. You didn't dawn on such upsetting notions, Miriam. What matters now is that we work. The work you do is of great benefit both to the liberation and to myself. And to my eye, you've already achieved the very distinction your father wished. I thank you for the generous words, Your Highness. I know what Elaine's trying to say. It's like, you don't have to do anything too much. Like, I see your efforts and you are helping. But Miriam's also like, I need more special honors to make my dad happy. Otherwise, he won't be happy with me. A word, Selfie. Why is it you always arrive late to muster? Such tardiness impacts not only yourself, but the lasting morale of our entire army. As there's only so much time I have for my work, and I rather don't enjoy being away from it. I'll not fault your dedication to this research. Yet while you march as a member of the Liberation Army, you've no choice but to follow His Highness's every order. I suppose so, yes. And I can't deny how much he's done for me. I try to improve, for his sake. See that you do more than try. As you well know, there are few amongst our ranks who can rival your immense ability with hers. In fact, I often hear the other soldiers singing your praises for the contributions you part in battle. Do you now? I didn't know they felt that way about me. At times, I've often wondered... I've even wondered if my lack of offensive magic was a burden to them. I assure you, you've no need to worry. Each of us has our own strengths and weaknesses. And I, for one, put great stock in your strengths. If only you would do the same. Thank you for saying such a thing. All that I ask in return is that you perform your duties with the utmost care. Speaking of which, I trust you've not forgotten our upcoming battle? Of course not. I can never. Somehow I struggle to believe you. But very well, let us part together. I should really start pairing up characters that have rapport conversations with them. That they'll get that boosts. Elvia and Monica. What's happened, Selby? You look utterly exhausted. That you, Monica. I require nourishment. You shall have it. Stay strong while I fetch you some food. Thank you again, Monica. At times, I grow so absorbed in my research, I forget to eat for an entire day. I shudder to think what would have happened if I hadn't come when I did. In a sense, I can't help but admire your single-minded devotion to knowledge. Oh? No? When I was young, my parents kept me on an extremely strict schedule, one which saw my time devoted to my studies and little else. It was practically torture being forced to learn day in and day out. No matter how intently I watched the hourglass, the flow of its sands was always painfully slow. All that to say, I admire your motivation, Selby. Never find the energy to spur myself on as you have. Fascinating, yes, but I confess my research is the only pleasure I know in life. Really, you have other joys which drive you forth, though. Joys beyond the pursuit of scholarship. Well, I suppose I do enjoy a nice cup of tea beneath a starlit sky. Yet my instructor shunned such fanciful hobbies and urged me ever towards the noble and sublime. How very callous of them. While it is true I delight in my research, it's not out of some vain search for the sublime. I simply found where my curiosity lay and chose to pledge my life to its calling, that's all. Hope to do the same as you someday. 
for you, Will Monica, and I can't wait to see where your passion leads you. Leads you. Whoops. Hurts that. Wolf and Adele. Here, Adele. This is for you. Gift from the town we passed through earlier? Not sure what I've done to deserve this role. Don't you remember? You helped me yesterday during battle. Well, I did pull you to your feet after you'd fallen over, but just about anyone would do the same. And only you actually did it. Anyway, I should be going. Wait, I... Damn. I have something for you, Adele. Again? Don't tell me this is for returning your coin purse after you dropped it. If it is, I won't accept it. That was common courtesy, Rolf, and nothing more. Maybe so, but a debt is a debt, no matter how small. Answer me this, then. Is there a reason for all the stubbornness? Just something my mom said the day she died. I was still young at the time, but I remember what she told me clear as day. The worst thing you can do as life is not return a favor. She never got the chance to teach me many lessons, but tried to take the ones she did teach me as seriously as possible. Well, I won't begrudge you that wish. But can't you express the same emotion with a simple thank you? Perfectly honest with you, I've never known if words would be enough. We wanted to make sure you made your point. I get that. But don't worry, Rolf. You've more than shown just how appreciative you are. That's good to hear. And thank you again, Adol. Please, any more gratitude and I think I might blush. Oh, shit. Oh, this isn't right either. Don't you work, damn you. That she always used to put in here? It's all the grumbling for Roush. Ah, you're the witch from the swamp. Hey, get your hands off my notebook. A recipe, hmm? Last I heard, they only eat this stew in the more remote regions of Cornea. A local cuisine, then. I'd always assumed my mother created dish, the dish herself. Well, you'll be glad to know I've actually had it. It's strangely sweet, yet addictingly acidic at the same time. And while it's creating media the ingredient is rather quick to spoil. We should have a fitting substitute somewhere around here. Ha! Huh? You do just a trick. Care to try it? Why are you doing this exactly? My culinary trouble should be no concern of yours. No, oh, I just wanted to help a young sorcerer in need. Don't read too much into it. So, shall we? I suppose we can test it out just this once. How's this? It's close, I would say, but far too sweet. Yes, it seems I'll have to use a little less honey next time. To be frank, I can't keep eating this. Here I forget what my mother's version never even tasted like. Oh? Those must be some memories indeed, if a spoon's full of soup is enough to wash them away. Dare mock me? Bring it here, I'll drink the entire bowl. Be my guest. He really is an arrogant child, and for some reason, I can't resist helping him. Uh -huh. Actually, let me look at the report. Does Miriam have any rapport with... No. Yana, Aush, and me have rapport, but I want Miriam on my team, but... Does not get any stat boosts? That's one from Selvi. Let's see, where's the next... Oh, this one's... That one's in Atlanta. Can't even go there. Lane and Bruno. Damn, Travis. Who does he think he is, anyway? Has something happened between the two of you, Bruno? Oh, nothing. It's just, he's foisting all my favorite foods on me. Of course, I'm happy to take him, but I don't know. He never used to do nothing like this before. Really, you think he'd be fighting me for the good stuff, not just giving it away? I'm not certain I would, actually. If I had to guess, I would assume he still feels guilt over the manner in which he departed the Tricorns. Either that, or he's merely happy to be sharing your company again, Bruno. That's enough standing around and talking about it, though. I'm gonna go bring all this back to him. You aren't going to keep his gift? I did, the first time, but this has been dragging on for days now. It's like he's barely even thinking of me as his friend anymore. I wish he'd just stopped trying to worry about me and go back to being the same old Travis. Perhaps you could tell him that, then. I'm certain he'd be happy to hear you say it. Urgh, why's it always gotta be him getting his way? Ah, <laughs> uh, Travis is just messing with you, Bruno. 
So there's one I can't do. This one's in a different land. Uh, so I'm moving to the island. Lex and Joseph. This is a surprise indeed, Lex. You've grown far quicker than I previously thought possible. Yeah, maybe, but I'm still nothing compared to Elaine. You shall ever match His Highness's innate skill, yes. Such was the case with his mother before him and her father before her. Huh, didn't realize it ran in the family. Can I ask you something, Joseph? Why'd you ever agree to start teaching me, and all those years ago? Oops. For all you knew, I was just a kid of some local fisherman. Because I felt His Highness needed someone to train with, and you were the ideal partner. For all, healthy competition shall spur both sides on in equal measure. And of those living on this island, only you were close enough in age and stature. Yes, that makes sense, yeah. Yet you've become much more than a mere sparring partner in recent years. You are His Highness's greatest friend, Lex, the one he trusts above all others. Even you? That's kind of hard to believe. Besides, he's got a whole damn army now. Not sure he'd pick a fool like me over any of them. You are no fool, nor is military might a fair measure of thrust. trust. What matters in a friend is knowing they would sacrifice everything to come to your aid. And one that would is a treasure most irreplaceable. You have been that friend to him for many years, Lex. All I ask is that you continue to do so. Oh, uh... You're gonna make a guy blush when you put it like that. But trust me, you didn't even have to ask. I really thought to return your ample sincerity and kind. Losing my ability to talk. Getting so tired of reading. Done with reading. Last one. Elaine and Scarlet. You remember this place, Elaine? How could I not? Lex and I used to waste hours in these woods fashioning fallen branches into a of sword. And eating nuts from the trees until your stomachs hurt, yet. I guess it's a rather embarrassing memory. Oh, hey, what are you guys doing out here? I could ask you the same thing, Lex. Oh, you know, just figured I'd see how the island's been doing since we left. That old altar is the same as always, by the way. You used to get so mad at us for playing back there, Scarlet. That was actually more of a you problem, Lex, and only because you kept trying to climb on the statue. Guess so, yeah. Well, I better get going. That must have been killing me for some reason. Still a slave to his habits, I think. Please tell me you haven't been eating any nuts, at least. Um, no, of course not. Short and cool. Oh, well, I'm gonna. Whoops. I'm gonna do this mini quest uh, off screen, and if I liberate this land and get this, um this rapport conversation, that'll be a next time thing. Die. Oh, how many honors did I end up with? 250, holy moly. Yeah, I'll try to stitch the video I recorded earlier of the battles and getting the character this rapport video together. Make one super long video. Whew, I'm tired. I'm gonna take a nap.